Welcome. Welcome again to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Hope everybody had a good weekend and do me a favor and hit the like button if you want the Arizona Diamondbacks to win the game tonight. They lost on Saturday. That was sad. Not sad. Good morning. Call me Mr. Tom. Um, it, was, uh, it wasn't It was a close one. That was the tough part. So let's hope they pull it off tonight because if they don't, they're out. I'd like to see them go to the World Series again. We're going to take a look at uh, what's going on with some numbers this morning. Good morning, Shakir, and uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, going to take a look at what's going on in mortgage rates. And uh, our listing count, as you can see below, is uh, continuing to go up. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And surprisingly, uh, prices have not gone down. And we're going to talk about that. And we're going to get rolling right here, looking at what's going on. Today, the Dow Jones falls nearly 200 points as the 10-year treasury briefly tops 5%. Here's what it looks like. You can see the one up there and it tapped it almost 5%. Now it's at 4.88. This is a big driver for uh, mortgage rates. And then here is the 10-year 30 fixed, 30-year fixed versus 10-year treasury. So you can see that the mortgage rates go up as do the 10 year treasury. So rates uh, continue to go up. We went a little bit above 8% last week, and now we've come down slightly below it. I don't see any trends out there that say that uh, rates are going considerably higher or considerably lower. So I think we can depend on just hanging here as expected. Here's the interesting thing though. Um, here's our mid month forecast. Um, do I have any research in DC, Maryland market? No, I don't. I don't. I've only have access to, to local uh, Arizona data. Uh, you could look at Redfin and do some digging there. They've usually got a, some pretty good data out there for you. So the, what the Cromford report does is they look at mid month and they look do a little bit of forecasting for next month. That's about as far as they're going to go out. So in the monthly period ending on the 15th, recorded sales per square foot. I'm going to get right to it. It was up 1.6% from September. That's interesting. Our forecast range midpoint was 290.95. So this month we slightly overestimated the price increase that would occur between mid-September and October, but it was well within their 90% confidence range. On October 15th, the pending listings for all areas saw an average of $320 up 1.4% from the reading for September 15th. And I'm going to show you something else again too here. Among those pending listings, we have 99.2% normal, 0.1 in REO, which is foreclosures, and 0.7 in pre-foreclosures. This is similar to the last seven months, but with a slight decrease in distressed listings, we still have very few foreclosures appearing. Now, what are they saying for next month? Well, they're saying November 15th, they're, they think it's going to be 1.3% above the October reading because we don't have very much supply here. Um, Judy says similar trend was in the late 70s, only this time it's worse. Here's what's going on with our average price per square foot right now as we track it, and it has gone up. Now, I'm expecting pricing to come down, and this is why. This is our seven day moving average with the top line, the blue one there, the number of new listings that are coming on over the past seven days. And the bottom one is new contracts and they're staying right there. And that's the numbers you see in the ticker below. You also see that we have 14,947 listings. That's gonna show a little bit different than the chart I'm gonna show you from the Cromford Market Index here. Uh, but I pulled that right off the MLS. But you can see that these numbers just aren't moving much, but the gap is still at 63%. So think of it as a bathtub. We're filling up the bathtub, that's the blue line with water. The bottom line is the drain. The more contracts we have, the faster the water goes out the drain. Well, it's not, it's, it's dripping. So we only have 2,300 active contracts and it's staying right there. So what's happening is our active listing count is growing at about 400 to 500 a week. Why do I bring that up? Well, um, I saw in a real estate forum, is this seasonal? Are we getting more listings now because of the time of year? And some agents have chimed in and go, yes, happens every October. And I say no to that because it's not growing because we're getting more new listings. And I'm not making that up. You can see that 
right here. It's growing because we're not selling as many. And even our sales are not dropping off the map. But the gap between the two here is 63%. In other words, of the new listings coming on, only 63% of them are going under contract. The last time we saw that much of a gap, prices started to decline. Now, there's an interesting thing about prices declining in real estate. And one of our viewers brought this up, uh, gosh, just a few weeks ago. He says, don't you find it interesting that when real estate prices show signs that they're going down, everybody's, oh, no, this is bad. This is, this is bad news. Yet if we go into Best Buy and the TVs are on sale, we're like, yay. <laughs> go in a car lot and the car's on sale. Yes. But real estate, no, no, that's bad. That, that can't be good. So, but it's what everybody's waiting for and cheering it along. I don't, uh, um, I don't see anything breaking quickly, if at all. And uh, um, I was uh, kind of wrestling with putting out a video. Um, you know, I get asked to bring some of these other guys on, like uh, Nick from Reventure Consulting. He won't come on. He's, he's too busy with the... Uh, MSNBC and Fox Business News. And then there's a um, real estate mindset, Travis, you know, bring him on. And they won't, they won't come on. I've invited them. Um, I'm not going to interview the guy from California. But my point that I wanted to make on the video, and I may still put this out there, is that look, if you want to find numbers that justify the market going down, to illustrate, say, the market's heading down, you can find that. If you want to find numbers that tell you that the real estate market is going to continue to climb, you can find that as well. So the difference is, are you looking for numbers that fit your agenda or are you looking at numbers to come to a conclusion? I'd rather look at numbers and come to a conclusion. Now, there's a lot of scary stuff going on out there. Certainly not great times. I'm kind of puzzled that real estate hasn't uh, had a bit of a downturn. And you look here, this is actually average price per square foot active listings. Finally, it's at least leveling out. It was 364. Now it's 364 went down, you know, 80 cents. Um, it's just um, the people listing their homes um, are still trying to price at their, at their neighbor's home. We've got the Jorge saying could increase in price per square foot and move be a move to an increase in smaller homes being sold. I don't know. It could be, uh, but it, um, they just haven't built a lot of smaller homes. Um, and, uh, I wonder if those listings that are not getting any bites are going to be coming off. I look at that as uh, canceled listings and it has not gone off, gone up. Um, it's, I think we're sitting here like 300. Um, if that starts climbing, there's a couple of things that I look at that I follow that, I'm just going to call them real quick snapshots. So here's the one here. This is active listings. Now we're going up about three to 400 to 500 a week because of that leaky bucket, you know, bathtub analogy that I gave you at this rate. And I said this about a month ago at this rate, we're going to be at 20,000 by February because I don't expect sales to all of a sudden get brisker in January enough to change this trend. So 20,000, why is that significant? Well, that's uh that's a healthy enough inventory to give you some some choices out there and i think that uh i think we're going to see it i'm going to shorten this screen here just a moment bear with me um oh and for those that watch me on friday and we couldn't bring pat on because we were having problems i i believe we have solved the issue it was a packet loss those of you computer nerds know what that is it's like throwing a bunch of marbles out there and how many marbles got caught on the receiving end, um, we were dropping about 10%. That's why you'd see this fuzziness and these delays and everything. So uh, thank you for StreamYard for uh, their technical support to help me understand this. And uh, so that's what I worked on on Friday afternoon and Saturday. Um, I like to look at um, closings over list price. Well, first of all, here's canceled listings here for a minute. Let me show you this one. Um, so you can see it's, it's gone up just a little bit, but it's pretty insignificant. Whereas in 2022, people started canceling their listings like crazy because they said, well, I'm going to try and get this price. And they couldn't, they go, oh, well, that didn't work. Let me take it off. 
So, cause they thought really that equity was there and it was going to be there and let me grab it while I can. And lo and behold, it didn't happen. Sean here says condo savings going nicely. I had no issues with the condo history report. Thanks for bringing me up to date on that, Sean. So what that is for people that don't know is now you have to have what's called a condo cert certification if you're selling a condo because of that condo that collapsed in Florida um, in order to get it financed you have to have a certification that says that uh, they've kept up on their deferred maintenance. And some of these places they're, they've just been dragging their feet, getting you that condo certification and um, not only dragging their feet, but some of their attorneys have told them, no, don't do it. Uh, don't do that. We, we don't want the liability. Um, I like to look at, um, but that's good to know, Sean. Thanks for sharing that with me. Days on market doesn't really mean anything to me. Uh, that much, as much as price changes. So if things are going to start slowing down and you're going to see this chart go up. Now I can look at this chart and go, real estate's going to crash. Look at that. Look at that. It's going up. This was in 2022. Well, then things changed. This is why it's so hard to predict things long-term folks. Things change. And all of a sudden, for reasons we don't understand, the price changes started going down. And now they're going up. Now I could look at this right now and say, all right, we're going to crash. Here we go. It's going up. It's going to crash. But that would be dangerous because, you know, we just kind of have to watch it over time. We have a number of listings, 2000 of them that have reduced their price. But, you know, back here we had twice as many, 4,000. And we had 17,000 listings at that point. So this is an indicator of how strong or how weak the market is. The other thing that's really easy to take a look at too is seller paid closing costs. The market's really strong for sellers. They don't have to give up much in concessions like down here in April of 2021. Look at that. Only 10% of the homes were offering any seller concessions at all. In 2022, we got up to 51%. Right now, we're at 42. And so it's not going either way. It's staying kind of flat. So if things are softening up and right now the Cromford market index is showing that the advantage for sellers is slipping away. It's actually slipping away at a pretty good rate. You get interest rates up to 8%. It's going to start getting ugly. Now I, I kind of pushed back on uh, some of the videos that you know are telling you we're going to crash. We're going to crash. And I saw one yesterday and uh, I might put some data on this, but I just thought I'd mention this to you guys. The headline is investors um, in Arizona are, are giving up and uh, they're, they're dumping their rentals. And there was an example of a four bedroom house in Glendale. I don't know why these guys keep focusing on Glendale. They get in there and they look and they find their example to fit their narrative. And he said, look, this guy bought this house in 2022 and he put it on the market for $2,100 and uh, he couldn't get it. So he reduced the rent to 1800 bucks. There you go. That's your sign that you're going to start seeing investors flood the market with rentals that can't find a tenant. Really? You're showing an example of one home in one part of town. And when I pulled the available rentals in that town that matched the home that he said it was four bedrooms, when I pulled it up, it's only three. And when he priced it at around uh, 2100 he was a little bit above the average. So he kind of had to pull it down because it wasn't a newer house. The ones that are getting 2100 were remodeled, pretty fixed up, real nice. So pulling it down to 1800 that's not a fire sale. He priced it where the market is. It drives me crazy to see some of these people post things in, these things out and go, here's one house. And you know what that means? She means that everything's going to hell in the handbasket. It's one house. So it kind of um, just made me shake my head. I watch them. I don't watch all of them. I don't watch all. I try to only watch to see if I can learn some things. Uh, sometimes they'll put up a chart and I go, oh, I didn't know that data was available. Let me take a look at that and see if I agree with that or not. And sometimes I go, that makes sense. There are things going on out there that could spell trouble. So I like to follow it. And uh, I don't um, I don't ever want to get into a, to a debate. I think I gave the example that said, did you ever watch CNN when they used to have crossfire and they would just argue with each other? And the only thing you got out of that was high blood pressure. I don't want to do that with, with other uh, 
YouTubers out there because, you know, there's a lot of us out here. So in the Arizona market, I'm seeing a softening and I'm seeing it starting to sustain itself. Um, I have yet to see an overall reduction in prices. So, um, Glock, uh, I wonder what the impact superstition vistas will have next year. You know, it all depends. It's all inventory driven. Um, new construction is still, um, not as, uh, flooding the market as much as we thought. But, uh, but then again, when you look at the cities that do have a low CMI, it's in those areas where new construction is flourishing, Maricopa, Queen Creek and Buckeye. So it could have an impact out there. Uh, but it's going to take a while for those homes to, to come up and get ready to go. What about vacant land? I've been watching and I see listings go up and down in price every few weeks. Vacant land is a tough one for me. Part of the reasons that vacant land isn't selling right now too, is that if you wanted to buy a, a lot and build it, I mean, good luck finding somebody to build it. There's still a shortage. If you saw, um, our video with Dylan on Friday, did that come out Friday night? Yeah, that came out Friday night. Um, he's the inspector on what he's finding in new construction. Um, it's tough even for the big builders to find a uh, decent tradesmen out there. And so you're going to run into that problem when you get a vacant lot and try to build on it. And you know, man, we saw some, if, if you haven't seen that, take a look at that. It's uh, if anything, it's entertaining, <laughs> just nails going through pipes, um, pipes that go up, they're supposed to go through the roof, but they stop. I mean, he finds some really odd stuff out there. So I think uh, in our market right now, we're just seeing the softening. It's going to continue all the way. It's going to get worse the closer we get to Christmas. Uh, in fact, I think we're already Christmas. I was in a Costco yesterday. I couldn't believe it. Um, running at altitude here says, any feedback from the letter that you and Pat sent last week? Um, no, miraculously. I don't know what uh, what the deal is with that. We, For those that didn't see our show, um, Pat wrote a letter to uh, uh, Chairman Powell saying, you know, could you please stop raising interest rates? It's hurting the market in Arizona. We're poking fun at the three associations that did, in fact, send a letter to Chairman Powell. And so it looked like it was written by a third grader. I thought it was funnier than heck. So no, we haven't got any feedback on that yet. And you know what? Either have those three associations. The central bank chairman's got a lot bigger fish to fry in our market right now than real estate. You take a look at how much interest has to be paid on our national debt. It's right there with national defense now. So the higher rates go, the more it costs us to finance our debt. It's getting harder and harder to find buyers for the treasuries right now. China's backed off, Japan backed off, and investors are kind of waiting because they don't see inflation coming down and they're waiting to buy uh, when they can see better returns. That's why interest rates are going up. Have you noticed that interest rates have gone up quite a bit this month and the Fed has done nothing? So we don't need the central bank to take anything up. In fact, uh, they've even said it looks like, like the bond traders are doing the, our job for us. Um, so they're slowing everything down. So there's a lot of reasons to be buying stocks, as we saw in the first article here, talking about uh, Dow Jones falls nearly 200 points as 10-year yield briefly tops 5%, taking the money out of the stock market and putting it into treasuries, get 5%. It's safe. It's only safe if the government doesn't default, which they won't default, but that's where the money's going. And when you have a lot of something that you're trying to sell, the price goes down, the yields go up. That's what's happening to our rates right now. And uh, boy, when's that going to break? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me what you think in the thoughts below. And have you signed up for my newsletter yet? If you haven't, there's a link below. It comes out every Monday morning at 7 a.m. And I just kind of provide you a little bit of Crawford Market data, some stuff from Mortgage News Daily, and then I throw in my opinion. It's a quick read. You won't even get through a full cup of coffee reading that. I recommend grabbing it. Do me a favor. Use the link below and sign up for the newsletter, and I will see you again. Have a fantastic Monday. Take on the day.